Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to what is going to be the last monthly of the year. I will of course be doing the January monthly in December so there is one more for me to do but this is the last one for 2023. We're closing out the year. Isn't that amazing? And when I look back on this year, well, one of the things I look back on is the fact that numerologically it has been a number seven year. And I remember coming into this year thinking, okay, this is going to be the time where it all happens and I'm going to have lots of bookings and the channel will grow and I had all this enthusiasm and excitement and yeah I was expecting that because it's a seven year because I know that there were people who were predicting that in a seven year and I think I was one of them I predicted that in a seven year any light worker kind of business or spiritual practice or that kind of thing really should grow during this year and my practice has grown for sure and the channel has grown welcome to all the new subscribers thank you so much for joining but yeah not as much as i thought it would what happened for me was the summer was really quiet and that was happening for a lot of you out there as well and i do think that's the venus retrograde that we had because my quiet period really was there and as i as well i think saturn going forward has brought in a lot of uh, bookings and clients and, and business and things like that. So I'm busy again. I've been, this month has been fully booked and busy ever since Saturn went direct, that gave some more power. But I did notice for me, it was that Venus retrograde period that was pretty quiet. So we had a seven year. So for some of you, this seven year, seven is Ketu in Vedic numerology. Now I haven't done any Vedic numerology videos yet. I will be doing them. Uh, the reason I haven't done any videos on the subject yet is because I've been busy using the numerological system, haven't I? So I've been building up uh, expertise and experience in this. And definitely if you've booked me over the last year, I would have included a little numerology component to your reading. I have been using it now in practice. It is very, very good. It does provide me with some extra information that Vedic astrology, I mean, look, Vedic astrology provides all the information. But if you want a slightly different angle, and there, there are certain things that Vedic numerology does very well that is not so obvious through Vedic astrology. So I have been loving using that. So we've, we're coming out of a seven year. Next year is going to be an eight year. That's Saturn. And I'm feeling the energy already. I'm feeling that it's going to be busy. It's going to be industrious. This is, I think, the year that is going to be much better for my practice and I'm going to be busier. And uh, I've, I've already, you know, somebody already booked for March. By the way, why is it that the system is indicating there are sessions only in March? I will get to that in a moment. I had to move you up. But, uh, and that's why my November is pretty packed. But yeah, next year is an eight year. It's a Saturn year, okay? So I think we're going to be busy. Some of you might be feeling that busy energy is coming in, you know, and I think that's good. I think it's going to be good for people financially. If you've found that this seven year has been a bit quiet and you haven't earned as much, uh, then, you know, maybe next year is going to be the, the stronger year. I do think so. It's also, interestingly, I've got written here the Chinese year of the dragon, I know nothing about Chinese astrology, but I love to just search it on YouTube and just watch what they have to say. I love it. I think it's so much fun. And definitely, I know in Sydney, Australia last year, I was at one of the Westfield shopping centers and they had this terrific um, thing that you could walk through and, you know, they had all the different years and you could read about your year it was so cool and i'm bringing up sydney because we are going to sydney that's right i'm taking you with me uh we're going to go in december so this is why my booking system is booked until march i i just shut everything down from december to march i will reopen it all right so you will be able to get a session 
definitely January, February, you'll for sure be able to get a session there. The only thing is I won't be doing live Zoom sessions. I don't think I'll be doing live interviews either. Doing things live is, is quite difficult down there because the time zone is very tricky. And, uh, you know, we, we're one of the first countries to greet the day. Uh, everybody else is, well, are they all sleeping still? I suppose so. It's, it's really upside down. So when I go home, I usually need at least a couple of days to recover because jet lag is an issue. You literally turn your day upside down. So the time that I'd be falling asleep here, I'd probably be waking up there. It's, it's a real like 12 hour difference. It's pretty full on. So uh, that's why December I've kind of just blocked out the timings, but I will, you'll see in December I'll update you. I'll do a video. I'll do the January outlook. All the videos will be going as normal. Uh, I might just be outdoors or something different, you know, and um, yeah, so I'll be doing videos. I'll be doing sessions. I'll also be doing research work. My archetype series has come to a standstill. I've been doing picker cards instead. I've got a, a couple of too many streams going here, so I, I will get back to the archetypes, don't you worry. Um, but I'm going to be getting back to doing some research, and that's what Australia is going to be great for. You know, I'll be able to spend time at my local library and really put my head down and get some work done. I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, and I'll be doing sessions, of course I will. But now, if you're wanting to have a session in December and, you know, I'm not available for that period, I wanted to remind everyone that uh, you can, of course, book a session with Jenny Johnson. Now, I'm going to direct you. If you haven't met Jenny Johnson, she, um, we, I did a video interview with her and you can, I'll put a, a link up there and you can click that. You can take a look at that. She's a brilliant coach. Uh, she's my coach. She's my friend as well. And if you know you'd like um, a session with her, definitely check out what she has to offer. She does very similar work to me and um, really great work, you know, and especially uh, for definitely business type things. But more than that, I mean, even if any kind of issue or th area in your life where you want to make progress, where you really want to make a change you really you know um, want want to do something in that regard definitely check out Jenny now she's a very busy person but I, I'm pretty sure on her website I don't know if I've got this right but I'm pretty sure if you check out her website um, and again I'll see if I can put a, a visual up um, I think she does have a book a discovery call or something like that where you know and that's free so I don't know if that's still available because I imagine that she gets very busy and sometimes she takes that down so if that's available um, that is definitely something that you can check out as well so and definitely that interview have a look at that I always like to promote my masters of starlight interviews here on the monthly and I'll tell you one of the items that I would suggest you do take a look at I'll put the um, little menu of what the different items were that we discussed and the one that I would point you to is feminine energy and saying no and I talked about that in brief on one of the last picker cards and a couple of you asked me who were the two authors that you mentioned about this topic of women need to say no and one of those was Gabor Mate I'll put his name and information on the screen I'll try and do this in pick a card as well because I don't know if everybody watches every video, but um, this is useful for everyone anyway. Gabor Mate, he's absolutely brilliant at this kind of thing. And the other author, which might surprise some of you, was actually Jordan Peterson. And uh, I don't agree with everything he says. I, I don't agree with some of his political views and, and things like that. But uh, I, I will say that, you know, some of his psychological work and some of his encouragement for women is actually good work you know and, and and worth checking out so that's my update on all of that now i'm gonna take you through the astrology of december and i'm just clicking through the slides and what i'm gonna do is i've got a little bit of a it's not i wouldn't call this a news matchup um i've i haven't really been keeping up with the news to be perfectly honest i have taking a break from the news it is yeah pretty full-on out there 
Um, I've just been, I have been doing my regular chanting practice that has been wonderful and I have been, um, you know, watching sort of lighter things, reading my, oh gosh, I haven't got on my desk, that Ayurveda book, that is incredible. I, I will share with you bits of that. I should make little videos or something and share little insights that come up from that. It's a really great book. Um, but I, I do have some notes here on the tensions in the world, which I might as well go through. Um, I've got here, yeah, we do have war in our world. And I'm going to touch very briefly on um, Ukraine and Russia because that is still ongoing. And I've got here my hopeful prediction that it would end last summer hasn't happened. It's still going. I really thought that that Venus retrograde should be enough to uh, break that or change that or have some kind of impact. It did nothing. Um, so I was wrong about that, which is sad. I, I was hopeful though. Um, I've got the note here. People are saying it can last through to 2025. And we do have major astrological shifts happening in definitely in March and I'm pretty sure May 2025 as well. If I'm right about that, I'm from going from memory here. I should have looked this up before, um, but I think it's Uranus. If it's something else, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we are going to have big energetic shifts March and May. The other war situation that we have going on that is ongoing is the Middle East situation. And what I'm going to say here is that I'm seeing that it's not as bad in December, but January is a nine month as per the Vedic numerology. And I've got my numerology scribbles in front of me. Yeah, we've got a nine month in January. So we're starting the year with an eight year. It's intense Saturnian energy, focused kind of concentrated energy. And we've got January being a nine month. So in terms of the Middle East situation, that could be quite full on across January. I do think across December, uh, I, I, I've got here, it shouldn't be as bad. I, I don't think it should be as bad. I'm just thinking I should have looked up, I should have written all the numerology uh, numbers for this year. I'll have a look. And if I need to put something on the screen, I will. But I think January could be quite full on. I think January is a month to take care. There's also a Parivartana exchange between Mars and Jupiter in the sky. And I'm going to cover that in a breakout video. Uh, hopefully I'm, I'm going to launch that soon. If not next week, maybe the week after. I'll see how I go. But I'm going to do a breakout video on the Parivartana exchange between Mars and Jupiter because that'll be interesting for each sign. I'll do an each sign thing for that. That should be um, a good one to cover. But yeah, I, I sort of see that this Parivartana exchange could be strengthening Mars and hence it could be problematic for um, parts of our world that are not in good shape. So I've got here, um, Jupiter is under Mars's lordship and so war could be really a strong theme in January. Jupiter expanding Mars's agenda, you know, and Mars is just fresh out of uh, ha having, <clears throat> I would say, having felt empowered in Scorpio. Mars would come out of Scorpio, is going into Sagittarius, and yeah, it's kind of this is a, a time of, of war. We, we can see that astrologically. In terms of the astrology for the month of December, what do we have? Well, the reason I'm thinking that this should be a little bit of an easier month for everybody on the planet is because we've got three planets in their own house. That's Saturn, Mars and Venus. So we're going to have Saturn in Aquarius. That's been ongoing. We know that energy. We know that and we're going to know that until March 2025. We've got Mars in Scorpio own house Scorpio. So that's until December 27th. And then we're going to have Venus in Libra until 24th December. So I've got here, I do think this is stable energy across the month. Now Jupiter is still in retrograde in Aries and is under Mars's strong lordship. I've got here, you know, one way of interpreting that is to say that wisdom is taking a back seat 
to Mars's warring spirit. And Mars is in charge uh, at the moment. Mars is strong. So we've also got a, a retrograde here. We've got Mercury in retrograde from 13 December to 2nd January in Sagittarius. And that's why I'm wearing green today because I'm honoring Mercury who's going to be in retrograde. And I've got here, because this is Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius, what are the kind of things that we can expect? Well, we could expect laws are being revised, potentially. Long-term plans have changed or long-term plans politically are being revised. There could be political confusion. That could be due to communication or intellect, ideas, you know, arguments in that regard. I've got here top leaders retracing their steps, going back on their word or having to verbally repair something or, you know, and there could be misjudgments, miscalculations of all kinds are possible across December. So this time, guys, in the, how are we doing? Oh, we're okay. Uh, this time in the little mini reports, we are gonna cover Mercury retrograde for every single sign we're going to have a look at Venus. I'm not going to touch Mars. Uh, Mars and Jupiter, we'll cover that in a, a separate video. But we'll also have a look at the new moon and the full moon. So if you're going to stick with me, apologies for the break there, guys. I just had to go and I don't know if you heard the oven bell was on. I just had to turn that off. This is so cool. I can do, I love these early nights here in the Northern Hemisphere. It means I can do the monthly early whereas in summertime I have to wait till like 9 p.m. for it to be dark so annoying anyway this is just the best time in the world here in the northern hemisphere but I'm gonna I'm gonna miss these uh, cold nights look at that I'm gonna be down under oh well um, anyway where was I I think I was saying if you're gonna stick with me then let's go let's go through the whole zodiac so those of you who are still here who want to watch the whole thing uh, which good students of astrology do do. All right, let's take a look at, we'll start from the beginning. So Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, Mercury is going to be retrograde in your ninth house and that's ninth house. Sagittarius. This is an ideal time for you to review what you want to learn or what skills you want to pick up in 2024. Perhaps you might be getting ready to teach something yourself as well. It could also be a time where you revive a project that stopped. Uh, much like my archetype series stopped for a time, I'm going to be reviving that, don't worry. That is going to uh, receive a lot more of my attention. Um, so yeah, that you might be picking up a project that you stopped uh, or something that you were learning, reading, trying or skilling up in or whatever. You, you can get this going again. Okay, now Venus is in your seventh house, that seventh house Libra. And so relationships... Or love you know that that side of your life it's not the best this month but it will improve a lot from the 24th or 25th of December onwards okay so you've got a lot better time coming up when it comes to love um, so don't worry if, if things aren't so great across December that's going to shift and there's a new moon in Scorpio Jaisa Nakshatra happening on the 12th of December in your eighth house it's a beautiful full moon because Mars is there. Mars is in his own house as well. This is powerful, guys. So any clearing work you need to do at this time will be super effective. Okay, you can really clear something physically even. Okay, so I've got here, um, and that could be emotionally, mentally, physically, in any sort of way, whatever, however you need to do clearing. So it's a good time to clear out old memories, even physical clutter clearing. Uh, definitely do it at this time. Okay, and you'll feel lighter and more free, you know. You don't need to keep carrying a burden. You can really let it go at this time. 
has a full moon in Gemini, Ardha Nakshatra, 27th December, third house. So there could be some emotional storms going on with friends, for example. Um, I've got here, but there are new shoots of growth for you regarding your confidence. So this is actually a good time to kind of be the observer and be more focused on you and, and what's happening for you. That's, that's going to be a better thing there. But it's good to have a heads up, isn't it? If there are going to be some emotional storms about. Aries, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, Mercury retrogrades in your 8th house and that's there in Sagittarius. So this is an ideal time to review your finances. Great time for you to get up to date on your accounts. Finish the year with your finances all up to date and organized. Okay, so you, if you have to submit expenses or whatever it is, just get on top of the financial things. Um, you know, and cancel any subscriptions that you no longer need and all that kind of thing. It's also a really good time to strategize goals for the next year ahead. Now, Venus is going to be in your sixth house. So relationships, love, that side of your life, we don't have great energy here. I have to tell you, um, it's not the best. I've got here, it's going to improve a lot for you from 18th January onwards. Okay, so that's a while because you're going to, you know, Venus is going to pass through the 6th, then going to pass through the 7th. Venus is not great in either of those places, but then Venus will improve, uh, as I say, 18 January onwards. But you can check maybe one of your other signs and you might get some better news somewhere else. Um, now there's a new moon in Scorpio, Jaisa Nakshatra, happening on the 12th of December in your seventh house. I stumbled because Jaisa, that is a lot of a tricky syllables there, Jaisa Nakshatra. God, try saying that 10 times quickly. I'm not going to try that. Uh, now there's the 12 December seventh house. Yes, yeah, this is really good actually. Oh wow, this is to do with your heart. This is to do with love life. I've got here, any clearing work you do at this time will be super effective. So that's, this could be clutter clearing. This could be physical clearing because we've got Mars here as part of this new moon. You can physically do something about something if you need to. Um, but I've got here, I mean, one of the ways we could read this because it's happening in your seventh house is that you can clear out emotional clutter left by past relationships. Okay, so if there were some breakups there and, you know, maybe you still don't feel okay with it or, um, or you, you know, and, and a way that you know that there's something that's not good is that if you're afraid that it'll come back, then there's some work to do, right? There's some emotional clear out work to do. So if you're afraid it'll come back or you're like, oh, I don't want it to come back. Or, oh God, I don't want to attract another one of those or whatever. Then the, yeah, there's something that needs clearing or healing. And any, uh, you know, yeah, sort of self-development work you do especially when it comes to your heart at this time. It's going to be really effective. I've got here, clear out old photos, clear out possessions. You know, you can clear out your memories. You can just, you can just feel renewed after this new moon. It's really great. And then we've got a full moon in Gemini, Ardha Nakshatra, happening on the 27th of December in your second house. So there could be emotional storms happening with your family or in old friends circles, maybe your childhood friends circle or whatever. Maybe there's some emotional storms happening around you, but there are new shoots of growth for you. So you just be the observer, look out for the new and grow the new. That is what is here, Taurus, at this time. And that's a good message. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I mean, where are the new shoots? We don't have any of that. We've got all these uh, bare, well, the trees aren't bare just yet, but they will be. 
you know, and, um, but look at that, there are new shoots happening for you, Taurus. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, or Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, Mercury is going to retrograde in your 7th house, and that is in Sagittarius. Now this is an ideal time to review your business plans, a good time to review any plans you have with your partner or your business partner if you're self-employed. This could be a time where you strategize goals and travel plans for next year. Maybe you're planning to do some travel. Maybe you're going to formulate some ideas or come up with some new things. Uh, but definitely a good time to strategize goals. Now we've got Venus in your fifth house. Oh, this is really beautiful. This is lovely for this time of year. I've got here, there is magic in the air, there's romance, there's creativity, there's fun, fun with your children. That's right through to the 24th, 25th of December. Lovely energy. So that's really great. Now there's a new moon happening in Scorpio, Jaisa Nakshatra. I said it this time. If you watch the previous sign, you'll see I totally messed it up. Uh, that's happening on the 12th of December in your sixth house. Now, any clearing work that you do is going to be super effective. So what kind of clearing do I mean? Well, this is this could be physical clutter clearing because we do have Mars here, uh, Mars in Scorpio. Um, th that's why, you know, it's good for you to take a physical action. And the best physical action to take with Mars in Scorpio is get rid of the old stuff, you know. Um, so I've got heat, but you could clear out old things from... Uh, to, in connection with old workplaces you know and this could be a kind of thing where you go through your papers your paperwork and it's like maybe you got paperwork from a job from 10 years ago and you probably don't need that you can get rid of it I've got here if you have ongoing legal cases don't clear everything okay so you might not you might want to hold on to some stuff but they usually say like admin stuff it's like keep the last five years of documents things like that i don't know you you decide uh but that's what i've heard all right now there's a full moon in gemini ardha nakshatra happening on the 27th of december in your first house so things could be emotionally stormy okay um and that's in your world that's to do with you um if there's any emotions come up feel them let them go you know, but allow yourself to, to feel uh, and, and if there's a release that's needed, I'm pretty sure Adra Nakshatra, that's the one with the teardrops and, and the freshness that comes after we've shed the tears, you know, there's a real beauty in that. I've got here, there are new shoots of growth in your life. Okay, and that's the thing to focus on. But if there are emotions that come up, this could be an emotional full moon, Gemini, this is your full moon. Um, just allow yourself to be alive through those feel feel the aliveness of the emotion there's a really good um i'm just noticing that the camera battery is flashing doesn't matter there's a really good comedian simon amstel who i really like and he once said that um there's a joy in experiencing the purity of a sad emotion isn't that incredible? So I, I kind of feel like that concept is here possibly around this full moon for you, Gemini. Well, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, we've got Mercury retrograding in your sixth house. So this is an ideal time to review your future plans for work, for your clients, for your service to the world. You know, how, how do you want to serve this world? What is it that you want to do? Uh, this could also be something in connection with competition. You might be re-strategizing how you compete in the marketplace as well that's a possibility it's a really good time to revive an old project if there's some work project that you just haven't had time to get to and you want to do it it's a good time to get it started again 
And it's also a really good time to strategize new goals. So, you know, we're looking ahead to 2024. This is a good time to just take time to think, to strategize, to dream up. It's, there's a bit of dreaming here, but it's, it's, quite, it's quite practical. We're strategizing. We've got Mercury here. It's logical. So it's like you're being given time with this retrograde to th really think about what it is that you want to do going forward. Now, Venus is in your fourth house, which is lovely. I love this. This beautiful, cozy, homely energy. I've got here, enjoy time indoors or winding down from work. It's time to rest now. Okay, tap, if you need rest, tap into this Venus. It is here for you. Now, there's a new moon in Scorpio, Jeta Nakshatra, happening on the 12th of December in your fifth house. So any clearing work you do is going to be super effective at this time. So this could be physical clutter clearing. You might actually be getting rid of old stuff. And this could even be in connection with your creative projects. Maybe there's something you just have to get real about it. And it's like, OK, I, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I have to get rid of all that stuff. So I've got a, a few things like that that I'm still not ready to let go of. All my like um, my jewelry beads and all that kind of thing. I haven't made any jewelry in years, but it's like I can't get rid of that stuff because I know a day will come where I'm able to, let's say, for example, I move into a bigger place and then, you know, I can have a little studio or something. So I'm hanging on to my stuff. I'm not getting rid of it. But this could be something where, you know, maybe you decide, OK, maybe you decide to sell it. I don't know. So I could sell my stuff, but I'm going to keep it. I'm sure I'll get this studio space one day. Um, but this is also, do you know, this is fifth house for you. So it's a great time to clear out energy from past relationships. OK, so there, if there were relationships that didn't work out, maybe some old heartbreak or something, you know, you can clear that. You can feel new again. You can feel ready to love again. But I've got here just general clutter clearing is going to be great 12th of December. That's because Mars is in that new moon. So action, time for action. As a full moon happening, Gemini Ardha Nakshatra on the 27th of December in your 12th house. So things could be emotionally stormy, you know, but this is quite interesting where this is happening because it's kind of happening on the other side, if you know what I mean. It's sort of the other side of the veil here. So uh, is it, is there's something a bit stormy going on. It might be quite difficult to pinpoint. Or you know how sometimes you have emotions and you're just like, why am I feeling this way? And you just can't pinpoint it. This could even be that. Um, I've got here, you might get new insights from the other side at this time. So that's 27th December, full moon. You could get some real insights at this time. I've got here, keep a dream journal at this time if you can. This could be a good time for journaling or just, you know, um, when you do a brain dump, but there's actually some kind of incredible message in there. It could be time for that. All right, Cancer, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, we've got Mercury retrograding in your fifth house, and that's in Sagittarius. Now, this is an ideal time for you to review investment or financial plans. If you're invested in something and maybe it's time to review that. Uh, got here, yeah, good time to survey your kingdom. And it's quite fun to think of your world as a kingdom. Why not? Leo does that. That is so Leo. Leo is running a kingdom, you know. It, might be a small business like mine, but you know, a small one person business with one small YouTube channel and a website. And that could be the size of your kingdom. But a Leo will not look at that as something small. They'll think, no, that's my kingdom. I've got here, yeah, good time to survey your kingdom no matter how small and strategize new goals for 2024. 
And I'm feeling inspired to say, Leo, now that this hasn't come up in all the other signs, but this concept of making a goal, like a goal is a good thing. I sometimes wonder that. I sometimes wonder what is, is a goal the right way of doing things. And it can be. How, what I've learned recently about goals, someone said uh, on this thing I was watching recently that there are certain things you never have to make a goal for because you're going to do it. You want to do it. You're excited to do it. You know, if there's a cookie in front of me, I want to eat it. I don't need to make a goal about it. You know, um, it will happen. And when you're strategizing your new goals for 2024, you can look at what are the things that are going to happen. Uh, so if I look at my channel, for example, what's, what's definitely going to happen next year? Well, every month there's going to be a monthly. That's going to happen. I don't need to make a goal for that or strategize that or any of that. Uh, the, that, that stuff is happening. So it's like around the concrete things that are happening in your life, maybe it is possible to look at goals or strategies or ways that you can uh, improve the activity that is happening and also try to try to get more stuff into 2024 that's going to be fun I'm, I'm saying this because you're Leo you want to have fun here like the, you know this is important so yeah think about uh, what's going to be fun and what what kind of thing like you don't have to make a goal for because you want to do it there's just a natural energy there for it anyway so think about those things and try and pack them into your 2024. Um, now Venus is in your third house. This is great energy for socializing. Oh, this is beautiful for this time of year. You, you've got really great Venus energy to finish the year. I love it. It's good. Got him. Make time to catch up with old friends. Enjoy their company. You know, treat yourself. Time out. Do your own thing if you want to. But definitely catching up with friends is nice. And now we can. You know, last three years 2020 to 2023 even I mean yeah people are well people are starting to go out now this I find this year people are going out some people never stopped going out but that that, that wasn't me I, I was in Australia I was yeah I didn't do anything all right anyway um there's new moon there's new moon in Scorpio Jesh the nakshatra happening on the 12th of December in your fourth house so any clearing work is going to be super effective. Any clutter clearing is going to be very effective for you, Leo. The 12th of December, if you have got some time and energy to just clutter clear your place, it's a really, really good time because we've got Mars there. So Mars wants to get in hands on and, and do something here. And we've got a brand new moon. So Mars would love to make everything physically new somehow. So this is a really good time. To, to do that and we've got a full moon in Gemini Ardra Nakshatra on the 27th of December in your 11th house so there could be some emotional storms brewing and that could be to do with friend circles it could be to do with siblings could be to do with professional network circles could even be work people but for you there are these new shoots of growth that are coming up so just observe be still and find out what these new shoots of growth are going to be for you because that could be quite significant for you in 2024. Leo, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, Mercury retrogrades in your fourth house. So this is an ideal time to review long-term plans regarding your home. And we're looking at strategic goals as well. You could be strategizing new goals. Um, but long-term plans regarding your home, this could be, it's, you could be reviewing or dealing with admin to do with your home or property contracts or things like that. But there's something where you're being strategic. There's something where you're thinking long-term here. Got here, strategize new goals for 2024, and it could be for work, so that it could be new goals for your work, or it could be home goals as well. 
maybe you want to do a renovation or maybe you want to change something or move somewhere or make something happen. So this is the time really to be strategizing. Now Venus is in your second house, which is great energy for time with the family. It's great energy for cooking something delicious. It's good energy for buying something expensive. I checked with Saturn. You've got Saturn 6 from the moon. It's quite okay, I think. If, if, if you're in a good situation there and you can treat yourself, buy yourself something expensive, but not crazy expensive. You know, like I was today, I was watching this video of one of my favorite vloggers. He was talking about the ridiculous prices of some of the very expensive things out there. And I agree. Some things are just crazy expensive. Um, you could be enjoying just time with your family. I've got that. But yeah, enjoying yourself. Maybe you're treating yourself or you're doing something that you love or you want to do. It's time for a treat or something, Virgo. I'm sure you've been working. I think you've been working very hard. You're Virgo. Virgos always work hard. Uh, new moon. We've got a new moon in Scorpio, Jesh, the Nakshatra, happening on the 12th of December in your third house. So any clearing work is going to be super effective at this time. And you're going to feel confident and refreshed. This could be clearing. This could be like emotional clearing. This could be to do with friends. This could be letting go of old friendships or kind of taking stock of the reality of maybe some of your friendships and that, yeah, it's time to let some of these people go. Uh, and you've got Mars here. So what I mean by like any clearing work will be super effective. I mean, you could just be going through the photos on your phone and just be like, you know, I'm just going to delete that. I don't need that anymore. Something like that. You know, it could be really simple. Or deleting old emails or there's something about renewal when it comes to friends. And we've got a full moon in Gemini, Ardhra Nakshatra, happening on the 27th of December in your 10th house. So it could be emotional storms at work. Okay, something about emotional storms around you, but there are new shoots of growth for you personally, and there are new shoots of growth for your career. So see if you can withdraw your attention from any emotional storms around you and focus on the new that you're gonna build, because it's gonna take energy. And you're going to want that energy. You don't want to be spending that energy on anything stormy around you out there. You, you want to go within and grow the new thing now. Virgo, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, we've got Mercury retrograding in your third house. Now, this is an ideal time to review long term plans regarding your work or even your studies. I've got here could be because it's retrograding opposite your ninth. So you could be looking to skill up or what is it that you want to learn or what is it that you want to teach yourself? I was saying this to a client. This was um, a few readings ago. And I mentioned this thing about how, um, yeah, that like one of the things, that, uh, this is interesting. I might as well share it. Okay, it's coming up. So somebody here needs this. Um, I was explaining how with my YouTube channel, you know, um, one of the things I get to learn here, this is going to sound really weird, but I get to learn how to speak because in my previous career, I didn't have to speak like in front of people or definitely not in front of a camera, but I used to write scripts for other people to speak in front of a camera and do all of that. I used to do that kind of thing, but I never spoke. And one of the things I was explaining to my client is that um, me making videos and watching someone like Vin Jiang, I'll put his name on the screen. He teaches people how to talk. I haven't watched him for a while, but I need to go back and refresh what he teaches. But um, me doing this channel, I feel like I'm getting like, I don't know, thousands of pounds worth of training in how to speak. Even though I'm not, I'm not spending any money, right? I just make these videos and it doesn't cost me any money, but I'm being trained. You see, so 
sometimes that's how we should look at things. Like someone might think that, oh, why would you do all those many videos virtually for free? But I'm getting something out of it. I'm getting the ability to learn how to speak, you know, and I'm getting the ability to learn how to edit. And, and I'm, this is all self-teaching. But I, there's something like that here for you uh, where you could be strategizing what skills do you want to learn and you learn on the job and something like that I, I don't know I feel like someone here needs that so for the month of December strategize what it is that you want to learn across 2024 and it could be professional and it could be something that you're doing on the job in a hands-on way we've got we've got the third house here this is self-effort this is self-teaching right okay that's why this has come up see I'm learning right now <laughs> I'm learning astrology right now uh, yeah no it makes perfect sense all right well so I've got here as well 13 December to 2nd January you might also be working out travel plans for 2024 as well so that is another thing there too uh, now Venus is in your first house and this is great energy for looking after yourself. Uh, this is beautiful. This is time to eat well, exercise well, a great time for self-love, nourish yourself, sleep early. You know, it's cold here in the Northern Hemisphere. Wear lots of layers and extra cozy clothes and all that. And oh, such a good time. I love this time. I love when it's dark early. I don't know why, but I like it. Um, there's a new moon happening in Scorpio, Jaisa Nakshatra, 12th December in your second house. So there's a renewal of energies at home. And I've got here, if there's something you need to put a stop to, this is the time to do it. Mars might be quite bold and empowered here, but it could be that, and it could be in family life. Maybe there's something you need to put a stop to. Maybe, maybe, you know, and go easy you know as well because it's Mars in the second house you got to be careful but equally it, it, there's an opportunity here of newness of something being totally renewed or a cycle being closed but you can do something about it it's like you're empowered here you can do something I like the, I'm really excited about this new moon I think it's going to be a very interesting one now there's a full moon on G um, full moon in Gemini Ardra Nakshatra happening on the 27th of December in your ninth house so there could be emotional storms with authority or emotional storms in relationship with father. Could be to do with siblings or cousins as well. That's a possibility. But there are new shoots of growth for your personal authority. Okay, so in, in some instance on the 27th of December, there you might not actually be able, maybe you, maybe you are able to speak up there too. Uh, because it is a full moon, it could be a time to express the fullness of your emotions. It could be. Equally, for some of you, it might be that perhaps you don't want to uh, be involved if there are any emotional storms out there, but you want to bring your attention within. And what you're going to find is there's a whole new level of authority that's being birthed in you. And if you recognize that, you'll be able to use that new authority a new power going forward. There's something where you're maturing. It's kind of like there's something where you're maturing and maybe you don't need the approval of the parents so much anymore. Maybe it's that. I've got here, contemplate where to invest your power as well. Libra, wow, there's been a lot in here for you. And I'm just remembering now, we've had some great comments from the Librans over the last, I think in the last monthly. So hello to all of those of you who comment. It's always good to hear from you. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, or Scorpio Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, we've got Mercury retrograding in your second house. Just checking the time. We're okay. This is an ideal time to review financial plans, your savings, your big wealth. It's a good time to strategize goals for the year ahead. Now, Venus is in your 12th house, and this is great energy for escapism, great energy for fun. Maybe you want to go and see a movie, you know, 12th house. That's what, that's what you do there in the 12th. Uh, I've got here, it's time to enjoy the last month of the year and to make fun a priority. Very important, Scorpio. That is your homework. Make fun a priority now. 
Now we've got a new moon, Scorpio Jeshta Nakshatra, happening on the 12th of December in your first house. Now you can totally renew and reinvent yourself here. This is your new moon, Scorpio. Wow, I'm excited. I'm really excited for you. I've got here, take action, clutter clear, change now. You know, I mean, what do you want to do? What do you want to completely change your hairstyle or I don't know how, how do you want to totally reinvent yourself maybe I'm um, thinking about the hairdo thing I don't know maybe think about that one but there you've got action power here you've got the ability to physically do something or change something completely new moon why not if you really want to get I think this could be the time to get a haircut I don't know. I'll do a bit of research. I'll put something on the screen if I need to <laughs> update that. There was an astrologer I used to watch a long time ago, and she always used to say, "When was when was a good date to cut your hair?" That was always so much fun. I'll I'll see what if there, I need to put something on the screen. I will. All right. Now the full moon, Gemini, Ardha Nakshatra happening on the twenty seventh of December in your eighth house. So there could be some emotional storms happening uh, and that's, you know, to do with the family. We do have Christmas here. So, you know, that's, um, and even if you don't celebrate Christmas, it doesn't matter. Usually people come together and usually that can be difficult. It can be, it doesn't always have to be. Um, but yeah, I've got here emotional storms with fa within family as possible. There are new shoots of growth for your inner world. I've got here, be still, radiate out peace and all's gonna be fine. Because look, the fact of the matter is if you're in, let's say you're with the family and things are a bit emotionally stormy, um, you're probably the most spiritual person there. So you just be peaceful and everybody's gonna calm down, okay? So, yeah, I, I, I don't foresee anything being difficult there. You're going to be fine. Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, or Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, we've got Mercury retrograding in your first house. This is your Mercury retrograde, Sagittarius. So this is an ideal time for you to review your long-term plans. Okay, we've got that beautiful fire of Sagittarius here. This is, you know, sometimes with fire, that's what can be seen. Maybe you will be able to see your own future as you look forward here. This is something quite interesting. Um, I've got here any travel plans you might have for 2024. You might want to start thinking about that at this time. And strategize that got here good time to strategize goals for the year ahead yeah it's definitely that mercury retrograde time is a real it's a real strategy sort of time it's a real you know we're, we're planning ahead here and it's important to every now and then give yourself that time to really think about like stop everything and it's not it's not always just about action as i was saying it's not always just about action it's about uh sometimes we have to plan ahead and, and spend time doing that activity now venus is in your 11th house which is great energy for socializing i love this for you this is great got here meet with friends you might also have some really good times with a sibling as well so that could be really good there's a new moon happening scorpio jason akshatra on the 12th of december in your 12th house so this could be a great time to clear out your psyche. Isn't that interesting? Because you see, we've got Mars part of this new moon. And a new moon, we've got total refreshment here. This, this is just fresh energy. Everything's new here. So, and Mars is equipped to take action. And this is Scorpio. This is a Scorpio transformation, right? So you can transform your psyche. You can clear your inner world at this time I've got here take a note of your dreams at this time too and we've got a full moon in gemini ardra nakshatra happening on the 27th of december in your seventh house so it's possible that there could be emotional storms with your partner but there are new shoots of growth regarding your heart 
Okay, so your heart space is ready for some renewal now. And I've got here, focus on the new. Focus on what's growing at that time. All right, Sagittarius. Well, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, we've got Mercury retrograding in your 12th house. So this is an ideal time to be on your own a bit more. Good time to review your long-term strategic plans. Good time to sort of think big, dream big. It's definitely a strategic time. It's definitely a time to slow the pace and start thinking about, okay, how, you know, in, in an ideal world, how would you like 2024 to go? Bear in mind the fact that it is a Saturnian year. So this is a, it, I mean, gosh, this Capricorn, we've got Capricorn, we've got Saturn here anyway, if we've got any Capricorn moon people, you're dealing with very heavy Saturn with your Sati Sati there. Um, but with, you know, here with this Mercury retrograde, we're in the 12th house. You know, the 12th house is escapism. That's why I say being on your own more. But reviewing your long-term strategic plans is something about dreaming a little bit. But as I say, bear in mind, 2024 could be a busy year. It could be a bit of a Saturnian year, a year that gets you to work. So, but ideally you're getting a chance to shape your work a bit more and have a bit more say over what you do. Now Venus is in your 10th house. Look at that again. We've got work focused energy here. So this is great energy for completing work projects. This is great energy if you love your work. Venus is love, 10th house is work, you know, and, and one of the things I've discovered through a lot of client sessions is that Venus, 6th, 7th, 10th and 11th, and 11th as well, isn't that interesting? I found that through practice. These are work kind of places for Venus, but people who have that, say for example, in a native, uh, in the natal chart, so it's Venus in Virgo, Venus in Libra, Venus in Capricorn or Venus in Aquarius or you can use Venus 6th house, Venus 7th house, Venus 10th house, Venus 11th house. Those people love their work. They get great fulfillment from their work uh, is one thing I've discovered through lots of sessions. So having said that, you do have good energy here for work but it's not great for your relationship. If things are difficult or trying or testing in your relationship that's going to be better from the 24th of December onwards and that's going to be better for many months okay so once you pass that 24th of December then many many months Venus is going to have that beautiful long streak okay so love life is going to improve over that time there's a new moon in Scorpio Jaisanakshatra on the 12th of December in your 11th house so you can totally renew some area of your life. What area is that? You know, this is a wild card. You get to choose. What, it, what do you want to totally transform? And I've got here, your actions are going to be successful at this time. Okay, so that's important to know. 12th December. If there's something new that you want to start or create, Mars is there. So it's like you really can clear out the old and create something brand new. You really can do that. Now there's a full moon happening, Gemini Aradhra Nakshatra, on the 27th of December in your sixth house. So things could be emotional at work. Uh, there could be maybe, I don't know, maybe clients, there's, there's some emotional storms or um, people are bringing more work your way or um, if you're competing you know, in the marketplace, maybe things are a bit chaotic out there around the 27th of December. But there are new shoots of growth in your life. Stay focused on the new. I mean, the 27th of December, sixth house, who's working at that time? Nobody. <laughs> so don't be doing any work there. But, it, you know, it could be, uh, it depends on what you do. Some For some people, that's their busiest time, you know. So it depends on what you do. So if you are a person who is required to work at that time, then yeah, it could be that things are a little bit more chaotic than usual. 
Capricorn, I want to wish you well. Take care. Hang in there, any Capricorn moons. You're doing amazing. Know that. Know that you know, you're, you're heading into your reward period very soon. You just got to hang in there. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, Mercury retrogrades in your 11th house. This is cool. This is good. This is an ideal time to review strategic financial or investment plans or there's something about you reviewing how you bring money in or how you bring opportunities in or maybe you're reviewing your networks your network circle or even your linkedin profile or something like that you're re reviewing this across this time 13 december to 2nd january got here what are your financial goals for 2024 you're going to want to think about that across this period and and see if you can make some loose plans you know no, nothing hard and fast uh, see if you can make some loose long-term strategic plans got here venus is in your ninth house this is great energy for students or for studying something new um, maybe you want to share your love for a subject that's always a beautiful thing to do and there's great energy for travel if you are going somewhere. So that's going to be good. Now there's a new moon in Scorpio Jaisa Nakshatra happening on the 12th of December in your 10th house. So you can start something brand new at work. And I've got here, if you take action now, it will be successful. So definitely do that, Aquarius. Full moon, Gemini, Ardha Nakshatra, happening on the 27th of December in your fifth house. So there could be emotional storms in your love life or with children. But there's something about there's emotional storms out there, but you're okay. Right, and I've got here in your heart, there are new shoots of growth. So stay focused on what is new. And let people out there be free to do what they do. You give them freedom, they're going to give you freedom too. All right, well, take care, Aquarius, and any Aquarius moon people, hang in there, keep going, you're doing amazing. Sati Sati is long, it's hard, it's difficult, uh, but it really, does, it really does polish us into stronger people, I do believe. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome... Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of December to the 2nd of January, we've got Mercury retrograding in your 10th house. This is an ideal time to review career plans and what you'd like to do in 2024. What would you like to achieve? That's really what you can be strategizing and planning out at this time i've got here with rahu now in your first house 2024 could be your year to be seen okay so this really could be your year and i mean depending on what's happening numerologically if you're starting a number one year wow that could be really powerful so venus is in your eighth house this is great energy for spending quality time with the family uh, quality private time with the family you know um, yeah it's that's a really lovely placement venus in that spot there's a new moon in scorpio jayshtha nakshatra happening on the 12th of december in your ninth house so you can clear out old beliefs and be completely renewed here i've got here in what new beliefs will you invest your power now you know if you've taken your energy back from old ways of thinking, old beliefs. You've now got that power. So where are you going to put it? Where are you going to invest it? And you can put that power into yourself and experience some compound interest. I've got here, any self-development work is going to be very powerful at this time. Wow, I don't know if you heard that, but there was a car or a motorbike or something that just revved very loudly. I hope that comes up on the microphone. That was cool. Yeah, there's some good energy here for you, Pisces. 
um, self-development work, self-improvement work, you know, and it's the kind of thing that you keep at it and sometimes you're just thinking, oh, is there ever going to be any change? But it's amazing how sometimes you just look up and things have changed and you have matured and your life is different and, you know, um, every now and then we need to stop and we need to just look and see, oh, wow, they, I'm not the same, you know, and the things really have changed. If we only live in our minds all the time, we might think that nothing has changed, but if you connect with your body a bit more, uh, and you'll see that you've grown and changed a lot. But yeah, I've got here on the 12th of December, I mean, any self-development work here will be very powerful and especially any clearing work, any, you know, you want to clear something, you want to move forward with your life, you want to get on with it. Because Mars is part of this new moon. So any actions you take could be really successful at this time. Now, there's a full moon in Gemini Ardha Nakshatra happening on the 27th of December in your fourth house. So there could be emotional storms at home or in your relationship with your mother but I've got here in your heart there are new shoots of growth there's something new in your heart there's something yeah and and this is the 27th of December I mean this is Christmas people are at home with their families there are emotional storms it's hard for everybody sometimes to come together and be under the one roof I know it's not easy um, so if there are emotional storms, just know that you're the bringer of light. You're the, you're the peaceful one. You're the spiritual one. You're the alchemist. You know, your, your, your presence being there is going to make a difference. So you just remember that. And um, I've got here, in your heart there are new shoots of growth. Yeah, focus within and what the what what are the new things that are growing in your life there is something new that's growing within you which is an incredible thing especially if you're in the northern hemisphere where by then the 27th of december i mean no trees will be holding their leaves but imagine there's some new shoots of growth within you and there's going to be something about those new shoots of growth that take fruition, that it's going to be significant for 2024. You might even be getting a little insight or a preview or something like that uh, in your heart space. The heart is where it's, it's another place of seeing. We literally see, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's the Buddhists who say, is it the Buddhists? There's somebody, there's some group of people, some of you might know this, but you're Pisces, you'll know this better than me. Uh, there's some group of people who say, you know, the seeing eye of the heart, there's, there's, the heart sees, you know. So I've got here, stay focused on what is new. Yeah, it's going to be important. Pisces, it's looking like, it's looking like a, pretty good month for you here any Pisces moon people here any Sadi Sati people here you just hang in there keep going and take it slow you know um, I'm sure I've mentioned this concept on the channel before um, with about Saturn I want to make a shorts video on it see I haven't even started I want to make shorts I've got like all these little ideas scribbled down I just I need the time I've had too many sessions lately I've been really busy doing sessions um, but one of the ideas that I have that I want to communicate somewhere I'll just tell you uh, is is and especially the the Pisces moon people you know one of the things I've been experimenting with is that when so when everything's going slow in life which is very Saturnian Anyone with strong Saturn, we know life goes very slowly for us. It, does, it, doesn't, it goes fast for everyone else. It goes slowly for us. But if life goes particularly slowly, that's the universe putting the brakes on. So what I've been experimenting with is that, okay, I'm in my little vehicle here on Earth. I'll put the brakes on too. And I've been doing that. And do you know what? Weird things are happening with that concept. It's really interesting. Like, Time opens up somehow. Sometimes I feel like, wow, like I have more time in my day. Like today, I planned to do very little, but I did a lot more. 
and then and I did everything by three and I was like well I've got like a whole hour here before I do this next thing and I was like what I had a whole hour it was amazing it was just like cool like yes this whole thing of um I don't know the universe puts the brakes on so it's like okay that means I can go slow too I'm I'm liking this thing it's it's kind of cool sometimes I think that when the universe puts the brakes on that means I'm being gifted time to do lots of stuff and then you know you can get ahead of other people I've experimented with that too that that's pretty cool as well you know I, I yeah that that is a thing as well it just depends depends what's going on uh, around you and but you can you can let me know if you've experimented with these things and how you are getting on with you know the brakes versus the accelerator pedal the classic kind of you know astrological thing of um, Saturn is the brakes and Mars is the accelerator yeah I, I like that whole thing it's cool guys I want to thank you so much for tuning in uh, let me know how you got on in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time.